Hello. And uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm very happy to be there. It's my first time in uh, Estonia and, of course, in Tallinn, so I'm very pleased to, to be here with you today. So, yeah, I will talk to you about uh, the connection differences between cinema and video game storytelling. Well, it can look a little, you know, strange or obvious for some point. Uh, we know, we all know some different licenses that were created by video games and used by cinema, and of course the opposite. But uh, what is interesting me mostly here will be uh, how interactivity change the users and how um, uh, the way we abort uh, storytelling and the way we are interacting with medias. So, first screens here. Um, this is the first movie which is uh, considered as interactive s cinema. Um, it was uh, a movie realized into, uh, in 1977, 67, sorry. Uh, it was called uh, Kino Automat. And it was uh, a movie um, where, you know, there is uh, this woman here. She is uh, at different moments of the movie. She was coming on stage and say, will you vote for this part of the movie or this other part of the movie? And um, what is interesting, and of course, it's, it was a first step into interactivity for the cinema. But uh, what is funny it is, uh, is that it was a critic of, the d of democracy uh, back then. It was a, is a film from... Um, a director who was still part of the Soviet Union back then, and uh, it was a way to say that choices won't mind, and that if choices are often an illusion. And it's funny to see how, oh, sorry, <laughs> how in fact um, it evolves into a completely different way, of course. Uh, and this uh, is a game uh, made of videos, so using in some ways some tricks from the cinema. Uh, but uh, this game, I really recommend you to try it if you don't know it yet. Uh, so it's uh, a game that is telling uh, through uh, multiple parts of a wall video from an interview of a woman uh, a story. And you have to discover this story yourself through a kind of very basic interface that is supposed to be a kind of police station interface or something. And you're watching some very small parts of uh, a wall interview and uh, using some keywords you can search for different parts of the videos. And you have to make up the story by yourself thanks to the small bits you're seeing. And what is funny is when you're watching on social media or forums about this game, no, there are no players that find the same story in the end. So each people made up their own story based on one single video that was cut into plenty of different pieces. And through the fact that they were using these keywords and thinking that they were choosing between different things, in fact, they create their own story. So it's completely interactive, but in fact, it was only one video since the beginning. But yeah, I should uh, go back to myself a little just to explain me you, <laughs> sorry, who I am. Uh, so I began to work in the video game industry 20 years ago. Um, I worked first on the Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, Game Boy Advance. Uh, in a small company that was called RFX Interactive, it was an indie developer's game specialized into uh, portable and Nintendo games. Uh, then I moved into uh, a game loft uh, for um, a little more than one year and a half. It was the very beginning of uh, the mobile phone games. Uh, so we were developing games when I arrived on these old Nokia phones, you probably all have uh, memories of that. And uh, during in one year and a half, we moved from this type of very, very, uh, l you know, low games to uh, engage, which was not what we have on smartphone today, but was um, finally uh, far much better than what we had in our, in this, this the first mobile uh, we got when I arrived. Uh, then, well, uh, I stepped back from video game industry for one year and a half, and I worked uh, on books and uh, on, you know, I, I made some different articles, uh, illustrations, because uh, I'm part an artist and part uh, a writer. So um, I worked for that for, for 
little more than one year. And then I moved back to the video game industry and uh, because I had the opportunity to join a company that was searching for someone to create uh, RPGs and uh, RPGs, it's my thing. So I was very happy and excited to, to join this team. And we created two games on PC uh, that uh, are called Silverfall. They are set in the same universe we created for this game. Uh, it was a very interesting uh, experience. I met some wonderful people, a uh, very incredible team, and with that team, at the end of these developments, uh, we created Spiders, so 10 years ago, and uh, we realized and produced, uh, well, five games now, and the sixth one will be released uh, this year. And uh, all are RPGs in different types of universe. We've made some, you know, fairy tales, sci-fi, uh, usual fantasy, and uh, well, some more dark fantasy, and so on. And all these different uh, universes were created directly for these games. And uh, well, going back to our subject, um, one thing that is very particular to cinema is that. The cinema, when a movie and the cinema itself, if you're thinking about the rooms, the place it happens, is designed for an, for an audience. So a lot of people are coming, like you here, and they are watching something that has been created and designed just for being seen and received. And um, this in, in some ways, the author is imposing his own story to, to the audience, and you're receiving it. Of course, you can dislike it, you can you know, be against it, but you're, while you're looking at the movie, you can decide to change it or to act on it. And um, most of the, of the films are linear, so um, you won't be able to choose between different you know, uh, solutions, even if as we already seen before, some movies, even quite early, tried some interactive uh, solution. And it's an old, uh, compared to video game, it's, a, it's an old media. So uh, it's more than a century old, and uh, it's and now obviously recognized everywhere as an art form. And there is a lot of prestige about uh, cinema. So there is Cannes, there is you know, the Oscars, and, and so many, many awards towards cinema. And there is some kind of uh, really glamorous part in the cinema that is completely uh, specific to this art form because beautiful actors and, or actress and so on. So it's something that is uh, very specific and it's is important based on the storytelling of the cinema because stories are not inside only the media. It's not only the story you're telling, it's the story that is wrapping around the media itself. So the cinema has, has created its own story also around its own industry. And uh, Vital Game is different for many reasons, and uh, the first one, of course, is that you're not designing video games to be seen by a large audience like you are, which will stay passive in front of it. You're designing uh, games that will be played by one to four players in front of a device. Even if you have millions of players, they will be alone or with max to two or three friends in front of their screen while playing. And this changed a lot how you talk to the person you're, who is playing. So you have to think that this person you have to whisper to her here rather than, you know, shout her your opinion. It's a completely different relationship, closer in some ways than the way a author has while writing books. Um, the player, of course, has to be part of the story. If he's completely passive through the experience, it would be, you know, uh, very deceptive. So uh, he has to be able to interact with it, to change it, or to, you know, pose and choose and uh, experiment and try something. So it's, of course, something that is uh, very visible into multiple branching stories that are common to RPGs mostly, but not only now. And uh, it's something that is, uh, for us, quite obvious to allow the player to, to be able to choose where he wants to go, what he wants to, to see or do, uh, when he wants to do it, too. So um, it's something that is um, really inherent to the video game story. Since a very long time, if you think about uh, 
you know, the first uh, game where you, you, you were able to walk into a kind of labyrinth, uh, it was already the, the, the beginning of the fact that you could choose to go right or left or even in front of you. And by going this way, you were changing the story, you were experimenting. Uh, it's still a very young media. It doesn't mean now that the audience is still young because uh, we know that players are not that young yet today. Um, but it's the, the fact that the media is young is uh, important in the fact that we're still looking for grammar to, to, explain, to explain what we want. We're still uh, experimenting a lot, failing a lot. Um, we're, while creating games, uh, we know that we are still at the very beginning of the discovery of a huge continent. And we first settled on, on an island, and this island is probably Cuba or something. And uh, we are very happy because we found this new island, and there are plenty of things uh, incredible there, very new. But there is a whole continent just behind, and we are still completely discovering part of it and trying to, to, to just figure what we will be able to do with that. And uh, this is something that is quite different from, from the cinema industry now, because we know we are young, and we know that we have plenty of things to discover, as cinema is, you know, he's the older brother, now in, he's managed to succeed in life, so he has nothing left to prove. Um, there are still, well, a lot to prove for us to, to, to be recognized as uh, artists. Um, art, the video game is, in many countries, still not recognized as an art form. And it's very funny because, of course, it involves plenty of artists working together. Musician, 2D artist, 3D artist, animators, actors, and so on. But it's still not recognized as an art form, as a whole thing. And it's very strange of that. And of course, it's not as prestigious nor glamorous. We don't put you know, some nice dresses to, to get to awards uh, um, ceremony. Uh, but in the end, we don't care. Because what is important when you are creating a video game is to be able to disappear behind your creation. Uh, you don't have to care that much about glory when you're, d you're developing video games. You have to really think about what the, the player will want to do, and that is what's important. You have to disappear behind him to give him the best experience, but you have to be humble in some ways. So, yeah, it's just a short uh, reminder of what we've just uh, seen. This means that... Um, and I think it's something that you have really to keep in mind when you are thinking about storytelling, about the cinema and video game, is that the author point and the player point of view, well, the, the target audience point of view, are different from a media to another. And it's because there was that difference that this media evolved into different paths. But as we, we will see now, it is actually changing. So, uh, for a while, video game was uh, a subject of fantasies to uh, cinema directors. They were thinking about how incredible the video game looks to be and seems to be. Uh, you remember Demolition Man, where this was the only way to have sex, or it was uh, Existence was a fantastic movie, but this was all completely uh, fantasies coming from the director's uh, mind, because of course we know when you are, we are player that it's absolutely not what is video game. And most of video games are represented by uh, the cinema industry as something that is Seducing but dangerous, that kind of, you know, probably mix up your mind. And um, it's mostly used into dystopian futures, it's used to control masses, think it to match in, into the matrix too. It's exactly that what uh, it was a video game in some ways. So um, there is a kind of um, negative uh, vision well, back then, from the cinema to the video game industry for years, and mostly because it was, um, I think, something that was uh, interesting, of course, all the possibilities bring by, um, by the video games, but it was also, in some ways, um, a kind of competition between both media. And honestly, uh, when we were still uh, watching Demolition Man, video game was not really able to compete with uh, the realism of the cinema back then. Um, well, so, since a very long time, uh, cinema and video game uh, exchange licenses. Uh, of course, one of the most famous is Tomb Raider, uh, coming from the vi video game, but 
uh, survive the video game used a lot, and I tried to choose the good ones, and it was not that easy because most of the time video games based on movies are terrible. Uh, but these ones are, you know, okay. Uh, so, uh, no, some are good. I mean, this one was very good. Uh, King Kong, not that good. Well, never mind. Uh, but, yeah, it was... Uh, a share of success, you know, if a movie is uh, a success, then the video game should exist too, and it was the very basic way to do cross-media, and it's terrible because um, it's not really that interesting, used like that, I mean, just like a replica of a license to the other. Uh, it became more interesting when some uh, when video games began to be uh, used and uh, uh, began to interest some people coming from uh, the animation or cinema industry that decide to try to make their own games. Uh, you probably heard about Dragon Slayer. It's considered as one of the most difficult games uh, in history and terrible because it was so difficult. But it was a very interesting game for what it was representing back then. It's very old. I mean, look at when it was released. And uh, this game was made by John Bluth, so a very famous uh, re uh, director coming from the animation. And the animation was really great, by the way. Uh, but it was, well, it was not a good game because it was too difficult, because you couldn't avoid plenty of uh, dangers in the game and so on. But it was very interesting to see someone coming from the cinema and for once, it was not to criticize it, it was not to, you know, to turn it into a kind of uh, work of the devil, but to use it really to create something new. Uh, even if it, it was a failure in, so, in, that, in some ways, it was very interesting. And it was uh, integrating some story branching. Um, you have to remember that before this stage, uh, story branching in video games were mostly by text. So uh, you have, you know, plenty of text, like, you know, this old books, like, um, that's the kind of game books where you have to choose between uh, going to the labyrinth or going to, into the castle, this type of things. And uh, whole video games using a lot of text stories were a, a bit like that. And this was the first time when they, they were using uh, has good animation to try to use this type of story branching. So it was something uh, very new. And it was coming from the cinema. And uh, well, today, uh, well, not exactly today, but not so long ago, a game called Detroit, uh, Become Human, you probably heard about it. It's the Quantic with the Dream um, uh, game, I almost say movie, <laughs> and uh, who is um, created by uh, David Cage from Quantic Dream. And uh, it's nearly an interactive movie in its own ways. And it's really realistic, some actors are scanned, and uh, mocap and so on, some real actors and famous uh, for some of them. And uh, the whole thing is designed to be a kind of interactive movie where you can not only choose to go to the right or to the left, but also to interact with some object, look of it, and uh, what should I do with that, and, and so on. So it's really a mix between the interactions that can bring video games and the way to tell great and uh, amazing and heroic stories that the cinema is able to tell. Uh, well, so the video game also took a lot of the grammar of the cinema. So, of course, uh, this is also coming from a Quantic Dream uh, game, and this is uh, Life is Strange, uh, a game uh, realized by Don't Nod, uh, uh, another French studio. I'm sorry, it's not just to, to push French studio in front of it, I'm sorry. Um, but um, it's two different uh, games that are interest, uh, interesting. This one because, uh, well, of course, Iskand, a famous actress, and this and used her while really playing during the war game. And this one uh, because uh, it's a serial game, so you bought episodes and uh, you are uh, playing this game uh, as, uh, as a series. So it was, not, of course, not the first game to do that, but it was interesting to see how it tells the story and how the play on the timeline, because you could wear in the, um, the, the story to go back in time and retry something, has really a part of the gameplay, so it was different, uh, inter interesting stuff that will be used and that are used today into series and games. 
So Cinema tried for a long time to uh, went out of the screen, trying to uh, you know to use this. I, I remember this uh, red and and the blue uh, Google that were used to see in. 3D and it was terrible when you were removing the glasses, you were, you know, crying like that because it was, you know, hurting the eyes a lot. But it was uh, different steps to, to go, you know, uh, out of the flat screen that was so used into, um, into the, and connected to what is cinema. And um, by trying to extend uh, the movie and the story outside of the screen. Um, the idea was to finally have something that is more immersive. 3D is a way to, to, to make things more immersive, but in the end, it was not enough. And uh, so this is, uh, um, I think it's a one of, of cha the chapter in uh, and the different choices you can make through the story into, um, uh, this is in, from Detroit, I think. And um, this is from Banestach. You probably heard about this episodes on uh, um, the, the um, sorry, uh, Black Mirror series uh, that was so, uh, you know, successful and a lot of people talked about it because it was interactive. We're doing that since 30 years, thank you. Uh, but it's interesting. It's interesting to see that finally, in the end, there is no more differences between, you know, it's nearly the same. Well, of course, this one has not the same colors on the others, but it looks a little the same. So, and the ID is the same. So, why cinema and TV and series have evolved towards what some concepts that were, are already used by games since a long time. It's because users, I'm obliged to use users because it can be players, it can be audience, it can be, you know, whatever, is they want, yeah, they want to break free. Thank you, Freddie. And uh, it's because they really want to choose, you know, it's exactly what is proposing platforms like Netflix or Amazon and so on. You can choose which movie you want to see. You can choose to switch to video game in, in the middle of your movie. Um, you can, you know, decide exactly what, when, where you will use your device and what you, when, where you, you want to be, you know, into that story or this, this other story. Uh, mobile phone and, of course, smartphones uh, also help with that. Um, the success of the last uh, console from uh, Nintendo is also the Switch, is, is also a, a good reflection of that. The fact that it can be used at home, uh, connected to your TV, or you know, you can take it in the metro or any, anywhere and, uh, uh, while going to, to work. Uh, so it's exactly what most of the users want now is they want to be able to play everywhere, they want to be able to, to have stories everywhere. They are in the story and they want to, to, to be able to interact with it, to reach anything in the story and to, to play with it. So, uh, yeah, other thing that is very important to remind is that they just want to have fun. Uh, it should be another <laughs> singer. <laughs> but uh, the idea here is that if you have too complicated UX, if you have um, something, a learning curve that is too difficult, if it's too boring to get inside your game, players will just forget it because it, they don't want that. They want to have immediate fun. They want to plug and play. They want you know, to get inside your story without having to think too much about, oh, should I use that? That's too complicated. So they will forget about that. So you have to really to think about how you you know, you reach your players, and they want to have fun, and not only once, but for a long time. So think that your experience, the experience you're creating, even in, in when you're talking about health, tourism, of, or education, if it's only fun the, fun the first time you're playing, it's not a good game, and it's not interesting. Gamification has something that is very strong, that has an incredible potential. Uh, but you need to uh, integrate some things that in the video game industry you, we're using. We could call it addictive mechanism, and I know that it sounds bad, but it's the way it is. Uh, like the progression, that the discovery, all these mechanisms that are really linked and connected to how a game will take the players and keep them are very important into all the applications you're creating. Because if you lose a player after two minutes and that they never want to come back to your application, you've lost it. So, and the users want to believe. Uh, we had a wonderful talk yesterday from Simon. Um, 
yeah, we all want to believe in stories. We hold believed in Santa Claus when we were, we, weren't, uh, ch we were children. And as adults, we are believing plenty of, you know, completely incredible stuff that are, of course, completely wrong. But it's not a problem. Maybe we, we can live in our own fantasy. It's a problem when it's used by someone who wants, you know, to, to manage our brains for us. But it's not a problem if we know that it's a story. And video game on this point is very honest, because when you play, you know that you're playing. So it's a story, you're inside a story, you can do plenty of things, sure, it's your, in your own fantasy, but you know that it's a video game and you just have to, you know, get out of it to go back to reality. And it's not always the case of plenty of others medias. And so, you know, terrible stories <laughs> Simon told you about yesterday. So, and another thing that is very important to, uh, today is that um, most of the users want to progress. Uh, it's, and uh, yeah, I'm nearly reaching the end of the presentation, but it's something that uh, I think is really important towards all the, the projects you've done. So uh, being able to, um, to uh, give to the player the feeling that he is better today than he was yesterday, that his character or avatar or even himself in the way he's holding the game uh, is something very important. And remember that your story is, as we were saying for the cinema, is not only inside the game itself. It's not, you know, once upon a time and so on. I mean, it can be that and it's part of it. But the story is also into all the mechanism you're using while giving interactivity to the player. So. The, for example, um, the, the design of the UX, uh, the, the way you let the player interact with, uh, with people, the way you decide um, to, to let the player you know, navigate in the background, and so on. This is a way to tell a story also. Stories are not only by you know, uh, the visible parts. There is a lot of invisible parts in, uh, in video games. And what is changing today? Uh, is, I think, and it's something very important to understand how cinema and video game can now work together and in the end really blend into each other, is the fact that these platforms, Netflix, but there are of course others, Amazon and so on, are really uh, a way to, because now Netflix are, is, is buying some uh, video game studio and, uh, you know, uh, some director worked really closely with game designers and so on, because I think that they have understand that the users have changed. And because they have changed, um, well, of course, these people that want to make money uh, <laughs> exactly propose what they want. So keep that in mind, because in, in any other media, and whatever you're talking about, is it about health, tourism, education, or whatever, keep that in mind that users are now really, really used to interact, to be free, and that's exactly what they want. They want to be able to choose, they want freedom, and they want immersion. If you keep that in mind, and progression, if you keep that in mind, you will do some very great uh, applications. And it's just a, a trailer of my uh, the next game we will release next year, and it's interesting not just to show you what and I'm so doing, but because uh, the trailer was not done by the developers, My of course. It's made with part of the game, it's made within the engine, it's real-time, but, well, it was real-time, of course, not. here is it, it's a video, but it was done by marketing and by people that are coming from uh, the advertisement uh, media. And, uh, well, I'll let you see that, but what is funny for me is that it's not my game. I mean, it's plenty of bits of my games. It's uh, characters from my games, it's environment from my game, but it's not my game. My game is not even talking about all that. So it's, you know, I thought I'd say, wow, it's fun. What is it? <laughs> what is the thing? And, uh, yeah, this is the difference between cinema and video game. Exactly, it's a very good illustration of what is happening, you know? Cinema wants to do something, wow, you know, it has to be. And, well, in the game you are able to create your character to, you know, it's a game about exploration, about uh, discovery, about, and 
you can't see that absolutely <laughs> inside the trailer, so it's very funny, but uh, yeah, I think that I've tell you nearly everything. Well, I still have some points here, but I think that we reached the end of the presentation. <laughs> yeah, thank you. for some questions. Uh, does anybody have a question? Please put your hand up. Uh, yeah, this gentleman over here, Serena. <laughs> yes, hello. Thank hello. you for a very good talk. Um, yes, I have a question. And it's on the matter of gamification. Um, do you think there are limits of what we should gamify? Uh, You're not gamifying. I mean, life is gamifying everything. Uh, no, I'm, I'm joking a little, I'm sorry, but uh, you have to understand that um, people are telling stories about everything, uh, like kids, but when you're watching kids playing, it's obvious, as it's not that obvious when you're watching adults, but in the end, it's exactly the same. Social media are full of stories. Uh, Self-told stories most of the time, but it's stories also. And it's, in a way, it's a game. A game of, I make you believe that I'm, you know, this person, uh, and I'm playing a role. And if you want to use um, the, the gamification in a, in a nice way, in an understanding way, what is important is not the amount of gamification you use, is what you want to transmit through gamification. Um, as I was saying, the mechanisms themselves are part of the storytelling. And uh, it sounds maybe strange or weird thing like that, but for example, if you create most of the video games uh, that are hitting the market, uh, the most famous one is Fortnite, for example, or Apex uh, since uh, two months. Um, and it's uh, games that are really based on uh, being the, the strongest, you know, and uh, you have to be the last man alive. So. Of course, it's based on uh, competition and uh, a, vis a particular vision of success. So, of course, this type of competition is uh, putting an emphasis on violence because, of course, if you have to be the, the last man alive, you probably have to kill the others. Uh, maybe not alone, but it's part of the game. And, um, of course, when you're talking about education, when you're talking about health, uh, maybe violence is not uh, what you should in integrate into your story. So we know that we can make other mechanism and use other mecha mechanism. Collab collaboration, for example, should be a better mechanism to talk about health and education. Uh, even if our education system, I'm only talking for friends because I don't know exactly how it is um, here, but uh, is uh, very competitive. And I think it's a terrible thing, but it's another, <laughs> another subject. But there are plenty of different mechanisms uh, that can be used. You can for, think about Minecraft, for example, type, completely different type of game. Um, you have to create, you can mine to build some new thing, you have to collect resources. And in this type of game, which is highly addictive, uh, people, uh, what they enjoy inside, in that type of game is to build something and to show to others. So there is a kind of competition. Look at my very beautiful Taj Mahal. Uh, but maybe this com type of competition is better than the one that needs to kill it, all the other people in the room. So um, there are plenty of different mechanisms that you can use based on the type of message you want to, to put in your game. And this is something that you should keep in mind while designing the mechanism of your gamification. You can gamify anything, but you know, even a simple interface on a website is a part of gamification. But what story do you want to tell? And this is what you should keep in mind. I hope it's an answer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.